Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Tackett here for DCTV. I would like to introduce Kirsty Mack, the Director of the Defiance Development and Visitors Bureau. We're here today at the beautiful Lilac Festival. It's the annual event. Um, Kirsty, how many of these have we had? Thank you, Sarah, for being here. We appreciate it. This is the 18th annual event, so it has been going on for quite a while yes. uh, and is definitely one of the ones the community absolutely loves. They love being here. Um, this event ended up being absolutely beautiful. Weather uh, did very well. You, uh, yes, lots of fingers crossed, lots of really, really hoping this morning, but it has panned out absolutely fantastic. And there are a lot of people down here already. First of all, how many vendors are set up here at the Lilac Festival this year? So this year we have 107 vendors. Um, and they are from all over the regional area. So uh, some came from as far as mid-Michigan, um, down near um, Indianapolis, uh, and then all over the state of Ohio. Right. Absolutely. I was helping uh, some of the vendors load in at 7 a.m. this morning, about 7.10 if I'm honest. And uh, one of the vendors said they drove two hours to be here. So it's not just Defiance area vendors. Let's talk about this crowd. It is a hopping place. How many people usually attend? So it's always an estimation um, because we don't have a gated area where we're actually, we don't have clickers, we don't have any of that. Um, so we just kind of go by uh, people look and a people watch and kind of go by what our vendors say. Mm -hmm. So we estimate uh, the last couple of years we had about 3,000 people. Um, I would estimate that we are doing that again this year if not taking over that uh, large number. Absolutely, it's so exciting. And it's named after the Defiance flower, the lilac. Earlier today, there were lilac bushes uh, available for purchase and also seedlings that were given away for free. Uh, do you know how many seedlings were there and how many lilac bushes have we already sold out of? They're all gone. What are some of those numbers? So there were 750 seedlings that were given away this morning. Um, and those were uh, with the assistance of the City of Defiance Tree Commission and a few other amazing volunteers, we were able to prepare those for the community in two hours. On Wednesday evening, we gathered everybody together. Um, we went to a local park over down at Laddie's Grove and knocked it out and it was amazing. So that was definitely another way that Defiance comes together to make things happen. So we had 750 of those and those were gone within the hour. So uh, only starting at 10 a.m. by 11, those were gone. Um, and then we had 100 lilac bushes. Those were also gone by just after 11 a.m. Amazing, this community loves its lilacs. So every year this happens on the second Saturday in May, so mark your calendar for next year, 2024. We'll be down here at the Lilac Festival all day today till four, and we look forward to seeing you next year at the Lilac Festival. everyone, I'm Sarah Tackett with DCTV, right down in the heart of Defiance during today's Lilac Festival. And standing next to me, this dapper gentleman is Sean O'Donnell. He's a City of Defiance Law Director and also the President of the Rotary Club of Defiance. Sean, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Sarah. It's great, great to be here. Thank you. He is standing in front of a beautiful red vehicle. Um, Sean, tell us a little bit about that. Well, yes, this is for the uh, Defiance Rotary Club's annual fundraiser, Corvette Raffle. Uh, we sell 1,200 tickets uh, for this beautiful vehicle. Uh, high performance, zero to 60 in less than three seconds. Oh. And it could be yours today. All you have to do is go to defiancerotary.org and purchase your ticket. We, again, we only sell 1,200 tickets, but we will not be undersold. Right. And they are for sale here today at the Lilac Festival. Yeah. They're also available online. They started going on sale what month? Uh, they started going on sale around uh, January, beginning of this year. Yep. And how much are tickets? Tickets are $125, and that gives you a 1 in 1,200 chance of winning this, this car. 
winning this beautiful Corvette. There's also another option. People can choose the Corvette, or what's their other option? Your other option is $50,000 in cash, and uh, that's your choice. And we also let you drive it for the weekend um, after our drawing on Saturday or Friday, June 2nd, as long as you bring the car back. You got to promise to bring the car back. To get the cash. Promise to bring the car back. And there's one big prize winner, but there's also, is it uh, uh, second place through yes. 10 also gets a prize? Yeah, there, there are second place through 10th uh, through tenth prizes, of cash prizes from uh, 1500 down to 150 So certainly a good return on investment. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a sense, how long, this is an annual fundraiser that the Defiance Rotary Club does. Do you know how many years we've done this uh, uh, we, we, we've done it roughly the past 35 years, and we've had a lot of local winners, yeah. but we sell tickets all over, from all over. We've had winners from as far away as uh, uh, Korea to, uh, yeah, right here in Defiance, Ohio. Okay, and tell us, well, that's a lot of proceeds. What do you do with the money after the Corvette is paid for? What does the Rotary Club uh, do with the rest of those proceeds? Uh, we distribute them to local uh, 501c3 charitable organizations. Uh, we we uh, pick certain uh, causes that we like to support. We're big with uh, polio. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot to do with, Rotary International has a lot to do with the eradication of polio and uh, dispersing the polio vaccine. Um, we're also uh, shifting our focus to water quality, which is a big deal here in the Maumee River watershed and greater Lake Erie region. And also, local 501c3 organizations actually fill out a grant application to be considered to receive some of those funds. How many um, grant applications do does the Rotary Club uh, fund each year? Uh, we fund, I would say, maybe 30 to 40 a year, depending on okay. availability of funds and success of our fundraiser. So come out and buy your ticket today. <laughs> Absolutely. And what that allows is how many dollars are then being put back into our community for services for our residents through these uh, local nonprofits. What's that dollar amount that goes back into our community from this very fundraiser? So the total amount we've done through this fundraiser has been almost uh, $2 million, about $1.8 or $1.9 million. Right. And that's about, is it $70,000, $74,000 per year? I believe that sounds about right, Sarah. Wonderful. So a great organization. If you would like to become a member of the Defiance Rotary Club, uh, how do they go about finding out that information? Uh, you can get it all at defiancerotary.org. Um, you can come find me at City Hall or the mayor. He's also a Rotarian and, um, or Sarah at the chamber. That's right. And uh, we'll, we're always willing to talk to you about Rotary membership or well, willing to sell you a ticket. That's right. Absolutely. The Rotary Club of Defiance meets almost every Monday for lunch at noon at the VFW in downtown Defiance. So join us for lunch and be consider becoming a member and support this fundraiser that helps support our community. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, Sarah. everyone, Sarah Tackett again with DCTV. We're here with Patty Parks, who is one of the vendors today at the 18th annual Lilac Festival right here in downtown Defiance. Patty, tell us a little bit about the business. Well, I have a charcuterie business in Defiance, and I sell custom and my regular boxes. Mm -hmm. I do um, on the customer's Platter or my some of my own. Mm -hmm. I've got. I've managed to accumulate a fair number of boards. <laughs> sure. And the name of your business is is Cheese Please Charcuterie. All right. And you started the business just a couple years ago, right? Yes. In, in October of 21. So we're coming on two years. That's good. Uh huh. And do you have a website or phone number that you use for people to contact you? I have. A Facebook page. Okay. And uh, my phone number is 
888-438-9024. And what, what's your Facebook page so the fa people can get out on social media and look for you? It's the Cheese Please Charcuterie. Yeah. Easy and to find. Cheese with a Z and please with a Z. Uh, That's my hook. <laughs> And Patty may have only been in this business for two years, but she is a chef extraordinaire. You've been doing that for a long, long time. Yeah, I have. It's been almost 20 years. So, yeah, it's been good. All right, well, check out Cheese Please Charcuterie, not only today at the Lilac Festival, but jump on her Facebook page and make sure you reach out for all of your charcuterie needs. Thank you, Patty. Thanks, Sarah. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Tackett with DCTV. These are my comrades and some of my favorite people, especially this young man over here. Uh, we're with the Strady Center for the Arts and also DCTV and our very own John Atkins is behind the camera. Step around and say hi, John. Come on over, give us a wave. Look at that handsome face, there he is. We are the team at the Strady Center for the Arts. We have Katie Pauley, who is our marketing and events manager. We have Jeff Tackett and myself, who are co-executive directors of the Srady Center for the Arts. We also have Al Blake, who, who's our building manager. And we want to thank everybody for supporting in the community the Srady Center for the Arts, our fabulous board of directors who um, just support and encourage us to continue to grow and bring qual top quality entertainment to our community. Uh, Jeffrey, tell us a little bit about the Srady Center. Well, the Srady Center was founded by a gentleman, Dr. Richard Strady in 2007 I believe and uh, just a, a heart of gold uh, for the community for the performing arts had a vision to to bring um, a higher caliber of entertainment to the area and we're just building up on that uh, legacy that he started that long tradition when he passed in 2010 the uh, the organization defiance community cultural Cent council defiance community cultural council uh, named the building after Dr. Strady, so that's why it's the Strady Center. Uh, we have just put together our, finished putting together our season for the upcoming year. Uh, we run July 1 to June 30th. We have a brand new brochure that just is available today at the Lilac Festival. And um, Katie, tell us a little bit about um, the ticketing and the website and the new branding and such that we have at the Strady Center. Well, our new ticketing will all be done through Eventbrite for our 23-24 series. Uh, we will be releasing a majority of the tickets on May 22nd, right after A Girl Named Tom show. And then throughout the year, we'll release a few of the bigger artists uh, as we go along the year. Great. Sounds good. Jeffrey, I know you're dying to share the season with everybody. Why don't you start with what's happening next weekend in Defiance and then lead into the rest of the new season. Well, so we've got an exciting lineup. Uh, next weekend we've got two sold out shows with uh, our very own girl named Tom and we're so excited about bringing him back into the area. Uh, followed up by our uh, Triangle Park series which we call our Music in the Parks here in Defiance uh, right downtown. Those are free events with a suggested donation when you come in to, to see those. We've got four concerts that we'll be hosting there and then um, this is the 10th annual Jazz Festival for Defiance and we've taken that under our umbrella and added a few more days. So that's going to be July 
13th through the 16th. And what's, it, and what's and that event now called? That event now is called the Music on the Maumee, and we'll give you a little bit of a look at that right there. Now you've turned the Jazz Fest is a one-day event that's multiple years, 10 at least years. Now you've expanded it into four days. Tell us a little bit about those four days. On Thursday, we're going to be partnering with Divine's uh, Visitors Bureau and hosting the Battle of the Bands for Northwest Ohio. That'll be a battle of 10 to 15 local bands, and the winners will go on to perform at the Rib Fest uh, later on in the year. Friday night will be our what we call our Rock in the River, and super excited about having uh, a KISS tribute band coming in full makeup full full staging full lights um, that'll be an exciting event Saturday will be the annual jazz fest followed up Sunday with our faith and family series where we'll have a group called Jeff and Sherry Easter from the Bill Gaither tour and Ronnie Henson the uh, writer of uh, uh, a song called the lighthouse and then there's a local group called the Tackets I think I've heard of them yes yeah they're <laughs> going to be here and then later coming up in uh, the year, we've got a full Straighty uh, series that we're announcing. And we're going to be bringing artists in like Todd Tilgman, which was a winner of The Voice in season 18. Um, a comedian, Johnny W., that we're excited about having. There's a guitarist, uh, Luca Striganoli, uh, plays a three-neck guitar that's exciting. Uh, some of the other events, we've got some classical events coming, uh, some children events coming. And then we have a series up at the Tenora Performing Arts Center, brand new 800 seat facility, beautiful place. And uh, our events that we're going to be hosting up there is going to be the Girl Named Tom uh, concerts this coming weekend that are sold out. Followed up by our, our next event will be a, a tribute for ACDC and Def Leppard. Uh, they're going to be performing there in September followed up by Lee Rocker from the Stray Cats. I'm going to rock this town, rock it inside out, that gentleman. And then we're going to be having um, uh, uh, Diamond Rio, which is a very popular country artist. They're coming in for a Christmas event in December. And then we have Sounds of Soul, which is a dynamic um, Motown tribute band. And Red Hot Chili Pipers, that you don't want to miss. That's a Celtic, uh, very full energy uh, tribute band there and then followed up by a, a concert you can't be, say it we can't announce the name of this nope. national international nope. group until June 19th but nope. that's happening next May and I took the microphone because Jeffrey likes to share information uh, in a month we can tell you who's coming it's super exciting yeah we can't announce who's coming Jeffrey but they're one of their, their one of their favorite Jeffrey no. is Elf. No. can't even say that all right well thank you for uh, all of your work all of our team is so so wonderful we so appreciate all the work they're putting into uh, to broadening all the genres of music that the Strady Center for the Arts is able to uh, enjoy and bring to our community uh, tell us how do you find the Strady Center it's on 319 Wayne Avenue here in town and uh, that's where the Strady Centers, uh, we host the Young People's Theater Guild, host several events there a year, uh, but you can contact us at the office at 419-784-3401, or you can go to our website at defiancearts.org, sign up for our mailing list, that's where all of our special announcements will, will happen first. Sounds good, Jeffrey. Katie, anything else you'd like to share with the folks? I uh, just want to let you know, if you sign up for that email, we will be doing some special releases on some of our concerts that are coming up this year at the Tenora Performing Arts Center. Right. Exactly. We're also hosting some free movie nights for family events, children. Tonight, for example, and it'll be a little late for this broadcast, but tonight we're showing Toy Story 4 for families. So, well, thank you so much for taking time uh, to be with us today, and we look forward to seeing you at the Strady Center for the Arts.
everyone. It's Sarah Tackett again here with DCTV. We are at the beautiful Defiance Lilac Festival in downtown Defiance, the 18th year. We're going to talk now with this family. We have four generations of this family here enjoying the festival today. So first of all, let's meet who everyone is. I'm Lisa. This is my mom, Sharon. I'm Roger. Grandson. I'm Sharon. Mama. Emily. Aaron. Sophia. And then my daughter, Mariah. My daughter, Mariah. Yes. And this little beauty is? Can you say Nat? Are you Natalie? Can you say Nat? Okay. She is. This, that's Natalie. My, yeah, Amanda's oldest. Okay. Or youngest. Youngest. Yeah. All right. So this family, the we have the Imbrox, we have the Baxters, we have the Baxters, we have the Hiltners, the Hiltners and the Imbrox. So five gen, four generations. Do you come to the Lilac Festival every year, Miss Sharon? We do. It becomes a family. Um, it's like, hey, the Lilac Festival's here. It's family day. Everybody meet up. So we're missing some family. This last year we had 17, I think. In our family. Wonderful. And Lisa, you said you come because mom says so. But I'd like to know, <laughs> now that you're a mom and a grandmom, uh, what does a Lilac Festival mean to you? See, that, that, those are hard questions. Um, when, when we walk around, I mean, it is nice just to be able to talk and, and be together and look at stuff in the meantime. Right. So On a beautiful day. Yeah. We're together. Right. It's, it's a family day. Absolutely. Emily, you've been to many of these, I assume. What do you, what's your favorite part? I'm um, just walking around, holding the baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> aunt duty, right? You're the aunt. Yeah. All right, Erin, first Lilac Festival with baby Mariah. Tell us what that's di what's different about it for you this year? Um, she, <laughs> last year I was very pregnant and it was very hot. So, <laughs> But having her out and kind of just seeing everything and her experiencing everything for the first time has been cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, ladies, for taking time to talk with us here at DCTV. Enjoy your day at the Lilac Festival, yeah. and we'll see you soon. Hi everyone, Sarah Tackett again with DCTV. We are here with another mother and daughters enjoying the beautiful Lilac Festival. Let's get to know these folks. Uh, if you would, tell us your name. Melissa. Michelle. Judy. Judy, two M's, and you're a J. Is there a story there? Uh, no, we just named all the kids with M words. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a good idea. Absolutely. So you're here downtown at the Lilac Festival. It looks like you've got plenty of delicious goodies yep. for yourselves and you're going to share, I assume, yeah, with some fam lots, yes. of yes. lots of presents. Lots of presents. Yes, Mother's Day's tomorrow, so I bought some stuff for ladies at church. If you bought anything for mom, it's not a surprise. No. She's right here. <laughs> if you liked anything, we were going to buy it, but she didn't really buy it. No. She had, fun I just like looking. she had fun shopping and looking around. Great, great. Very nice. Always wanted to come to this, and we finally got to come today. Yeah. Is this your first time? For me, yes. Yes. Michelle you. lives in Defiance. Melissa okay. and I are from Perrysburg. Oh, so. okay. So you had a nice little drive this yeah. morning. What were you expecting to see today? Uh, 
what we saw. This is awesome and the community coming together and um, it's very family friendly and it was fun. A girls day, perfect girls day. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Michelle, you live in the area. What does the Light Lock Festival uh, mean for you and your family every year when it comes around? I enjoy the shopping and all, a lot of local stuff and getting to see what's in our area and what's produced because it's great stuff so you can shop local and get just about everything you need i mean from boutiques to mm -hmm. food goodies it's just a lot of fun yeah. so i enjoy coming i'm glad to hear that it's the 18th annual lilac festival there are 107 vendors here today and it looks like you're helping them uh, yes. very much have a successful day. we have bags inside of bags <laughs> so yes 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 well, thank you so much for talking with us today. I'm really glad that you're here, and we'll meet some more folks as the day goes on. Hello everyone, we're back here with DCTV. I'm Sarah Tackett at the Lilac Festival and now we're going to talk with Brandon and learn about his booth that he has here today. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Tell us uh, your name and about the uh, business that you have here today. Uh, my name is Brandon Knott. I make handmade pottery for uh, people to use in their everyday lives. And the name of your business, appropriately, is? Is It's Not Pottery. Yep. Using your last name, yes. I assume? Yeah, the play on words, yes. Okay. What? Tell us about the different types of products um, and describe a little bit about what we see here on display. Um, I make a variety of functional wear for people to actually use in everyday lives. I sell the most mugs, but I have a variety of bowls, uh, ring holders, spoon rests, uh, and some whim whimsical items, kind of like these face jugs uh -huh. that are more whimsical that I don't sell a lot of every day, but every once in a while I'll sell them and it's made for people to actually be able to use in their household. So. Very nice. Where is your business located? Uh, it is located in Continental Ohio, but I have a couple places here in Defiance that actually do sell my work. So. What are some of those businesses so people can find your work? Uh, Ruby Rose, which is right beside the coffee shop, and Linda's Glass Gallery. They always have my work in stock. And is this your first year at the Lilac Festival? No, I have done the Lilac Festival for years and years. Oh, I first started doing it when uh, I think it was some of the f first couple of years that it started. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you for being thank here today. So I much. wish you a great thank day. You. And we'll meet more of our vendors in just a minute. everyone we're back here at the lilac festival with tim and he's going to tell you his name and about the business he has today what's your business called tim so my business is boldman woodworks and i'm right here in defiance um, right by where brickle school used to be um, and i make cutting boards and charcuterie boards and recipe boxes pretty much anything out of wood i try to stay a little different from everybody else uh, i have rolling pins pepper mills and the new item is taco boards uh, so I have some of those, of uh, the wine holders and the cheese boards, but pretty much I can make anything out of wood. So. Great. And how long has this been an interest or a hobby of yours? So uh, I've been doing it about four years professionally, but I've always been into doing wood stuff. Uh, but after the pandemic, I, I just kind of wanted this to do something different. So this is what I this is what I landed on. So yeah. great. Great. And um, how's the Lilac Festival been treating you today? It's fantastic. In my home show, uh, I love doing the Lilac Festival. Um, my, you know, Defiance is so supportive of handcrafted, homemade stuff. Uh, I, re I really love it, and I love my town. So. Great. Great. Well, we're glad to have you here today, and thanks for talking with us. And we wish you all the best for, once again, the name of your business is? Boldman Woodworks. Boldman Woodworks. Are you online as well? Do you I, have a website? I just have a Facebook page right now. Uh, at some point, I'm going to start trying to sell online, but I really, this is how I prefer to sell, face to face, because wood is one of those things you have to touch and feel, and it just, it doesn't sell as well online, so. Okay. All right. 
Right. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right, let's meet some more of our vendors. again everyone we're now here with garden time to learn all about these beautiful jars that you see uh, displayed here and they're all going to be delicious I'm sure so if you would tell us who you are and tell us about the business I'm Angie Lorenz and my business like she said is garden time and I make homemade jams and jellies pepper jams hot and mild mustards apple butters and then we also do our dips and seasonings, rubs, um, goat milk soaps and lotions and stuff too. Wow, that yep. now I'm hungry yep. and I also need to smell everything and taste the others. Right. Um, tell us, how did you get involved in this type of work? Um, I started out at the farmer's market a few years back and I had some extra fruit so I made some jam and it sold and then it just kind of blossomed every year. I just kind of added more and more to it. So. How many varieties uh, in the little jars would you um, say you sell? We, we have a number of flavors available with the mustards and apple butters. We have over 120 flavors available. And for the past two years, we've sold over 10,000 jars each year. Oh my goodness, not a hobby anymore. No, this it's is a, a business. <laughs> it's a business. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, how did you, you have a farm where you grow your produce? I grow some of my produce. Um, the rest of it I try to get from local vendors at our farmer's market out at Northtown Mall. Um, or some friends of mine have extra fruit that I can get and we barter with them for free jam <laughs> and stuff. But I try to get everything as local and um, when it's fine right. Sure, and you obviously support each other as local business owners oh, yeah. and all of that. Yep. How many years have you been in business? I started this in 2014. So. And you, your flavors, your delicious flavors, are available where? If someone wanted to come out and they can't make it out to the Lilac Festival, how do they find your products? We, in the, from May till October, we are generally out at the Northtown Mall Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings. And then Ruby Rose, which is right over here where we're at, um, they carry a full line of my products. And if you're not in Defiance, Wauseon, you can go to Junk and Disorderly. And in Bryan, you can go to um, Endless Creations. And they carry my stuff there. All right. And do you have a website or Facebook page you'd like to tell the folks about? I do have a Facebook page. We're working on the website. That's coming very slowly because right now we've hit the busy season with making stuff. So. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks for talking with okay, us today. You. And you've just met Angie Lorenz and Garden Time. Thank you. back here at the Defiance Lilac Festival, the 18th annual in the heart of Defiance. And we're now down here talking with some of our uh, teenagers in the area. Please uh, share your first name with us. I'm Peyton. I'm Aiden. And I'm Zach. All right. These two are seniors in high school with uh, our daughter, Anna Tackett. Peyton graduated last year. So you're here at the Lilac Festival. What's your favorite part? You, part about the Lilac Festival? Well, I would say definitely coming around, sharing part of the community, meeting with friends. It's about social gathering and just hanging out. It's a really great time. Yeah. It is a good time. How about for you, Aiden? I just like seeing like all the different things that people make and just like how everybody, like how they put so much work into what they do and it's just really nice to see. Same thing. I like seeing all the different um, tents and stuff like some of our close friends also do um, and seeing my friends and also the food. The food is delicious. Food is delicious. Do you have you come here every year? Uh, I try to. Uh, if I can, I would. But some years I haven't due to weather and stuff. Really right. Nope. This is my first year. First year. I think I've came for like 
six uh, years straight now. So th it's the first time this was held was 18 years ago. You are brand new, or maybe not here, and you were one. But it's wonderful to see that this wonderful tradition is carrying on year after year. So thanks for being here today. I'm sure you'll run into some of your other classmates and friends. And we'll, let's go talk to some more people. It's Sarah Tackett again with DCTV, and we're talking with the Nels family. They have a family um, business going on here, and it smells delicious. Let's meet Anthony and tell us about your company. Hi, I'm Anthony. Uh, my company is Anthony and Company. We make hand poured soy candles, and we started recently making wax melts also. Um, we started about a year ago. Actually, last year's Lilac Festival was our first event. So we've been going strong for about a year, growing slowly, um, getting some more events up in the Toledo area. And we've expanded on Etsy now. My daughter, Alicia, she does all of our Instagram and Facebook posts. So she's my social media. I actually got fired from it because I wasn't posting enough. And so now she's my social media manager. Um, what else do we And who's this lovely lady next to you? My wife, Christy and my daughter Alicia. Yes. And what do you all think about this candle business? It's going really well. It's his stress reliever, so that makes us all very happy because it makes him happy. And it's all done in my kitchen. So we have a candle factory in our house, and it's great. And I bet your house smells amazing. It does. All, all right. Uh, yes. So Alicia, tell us a little bit about the uh, how to find your company on social media. So we are Anthony and Co. Candles on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you stop by, we can we have business cards with our Etsy and Instagram and Facebook on it. Yeah. And you know, your generation does seem to have that social media stuff right down. I don't think about it in time. I think about it after the fact, but that's why we have people that do it quickly. Yeah, that's why I got fired from doing it, because <laughs> I wasn't doing it enough. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> so what's the benefit of a soy candle? So the benefit of a soy candle versus a paraffin candle is the soy is all natural. Paraffin's made from oil, petroleum based. So when you burn it, you get those chemicals from the petroleum in your house. Whereas with the soy, you don't, you don't get that because of the natural soy based oils. And what are some of your new flavors that are scents, excuse me, scents that you're debuting here today at the Lilac Festival? Uh, so some of my new ones are I have lilac, obviously. Um, I have a pink lemonade that I made. I have uh, smoldering cedar, cool melon breeze, and plumeria. And then we also have our most popular, the orange dream, which smells like a dreamsicle. And they smell fabulous. We have a few of their candles at our house. Also, the Lemon Breeze is brand new. And Alicia described it to me this way. It's like you cleaned your house without actually cleaning your house. I love that. They smell delicious. Thank you so much for being with us today and for being a part of the 18th Annual Lilac Festival. We wish you all the best. And let's go meet some more folks. Now here at the 18th Annual Lilac Festival, I'm standing here with Deb Wise Gerber, and she and some friends over here. Ladies, what are your names? Lana Shingledecker. Rita Meyer. Rita Meyer. They do not want to be interviewed, but we're going to draw them into this conversation anyway. Anyway, Deb, you're here with the Trees of Life and the Buckley Moss Society. Tell us what your booth is doing here today at the Lilac Festival. Uh, we're selling raffle tickets. We have a list of prizes they can win. The first prize is this P. Buckley Moss print, and one of the prizes, a hand-done uh, pillow, which one of our members did. Okay, and they can get tickets. Uh, we'll also have a benefit October 1st. So save the date, October 1st, um, out of the KSC Hall, and it's called uh, Defiance Has Talent and Heart. So we'll have different performers 
there. So okay, and yeah. you're uh, you're selling tickets. What are the proceeds going towards? You mentioned that there's a young man that needs uh, some help that uh, is battling a health condition. Do you'd like to talk about that? Okay. His name's Marshall. Um, Marshall Yost from the Sherwood area, and they're aiming to get like an all-terrain vehicle that they can use he and some other children too will be able to use in the community okay. what's the condition that Marshall is facing it's called Pompey's disease and it's he needs like two what is it every other week he needs an infusion like an eight-hour infusion to combat this okay and it's similar to to muscular dystrophy okay so the tickets are available to uh, for the raffle. Let's turn it around so the camera can see. There's 20 different prizes that can be won from the raffle, and the ticket prices are there. And uh, the fundraiser is continuing until until um, October 1st is when we'll have the benefit, and we'll draw draw right after that. Right. So. What does it mean to you all today to be able to bring this type of a fundraiser to the community at the Lilac Festival? Yeah. We're just overwhelmed with the support from people. We're all like, you know, they say Defiance is a great place to live, but when you come to something like this, you really, you really witness that. So, right, right. so thanks for doing this. <laughs> You're very welcome. We wish you all the best. Our prayers to Marshall and his family, and let's go meet some more friends. Hi there, Sarah Tackett again with DCTV, and now we're going to talk with Stephanie. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Tell us a little bit about uh, the name of your business and what kind of products you offer. So the name of my business is 28 Stitches, and I originally started with handmade headbands and scrunchies and accessories, um, and then branched into women's clothing. And the name comes from Matthew 28, which is the call to missions, um, because my business gives 15% of proceeds to missionaries through my local church. Wow. That's wonderful. What a blessing. And how long have you been having your business? I've been doing my business for a little over three years now. So. And how can folks find your uh, your items for sale when you're not set up at festivals like this? Um, so when we're not at markets around Ohio, um, you can find 28 Stitches. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Um, we're also on Shopify and we're on Instagram as well. Okay, and where is your business based? Our business is based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, but we're, we travel all over Ohio, um, and some into Michigan, and every now and again in West Virginia too. So. And what are some of your favorite missions to support with your proceeds? Um, so f for me personally, I started doing uh, with a bunch of different charities and we rotated each month, but now um, we support three uh, missionary families through church. So um, there's missionary families all across the globe that we support. Um, so I just love doing that and being able to hear some of their stories personally. Um, it's definitely made the missional aspect of my business more personal now that I know some of the people that are actually in the field serving. Well, wonderful. Well, bless you for the good work that you're doing, and be sure to look up 28 Stitches. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Sarah Tackett again with DCTV. I'm here with Sean Mack with the State Bank. Great community partner. They support so much in our community. You've got the Gibbs truck here today. Sean, tell us about that. So our gifts program to the bank is gathering individuals to volunteer, empower, and serve. So it, for nonprofit organizations, you can actually sign up through our website and request volunteers. Uh, today we are actually partnering with the Lions Club for their pancake breakfast. Um, and with that, we took free will donations and we're matching up to $500 of the money that they received in goodwill donations. So not only can you get volunteers, but sometimes we can do fundraisers and all kinds of great things. That's wonderful. And how long has the Gifts program been in existence? I hard to say. I I don't know for sure. I think it's been five or six years. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the truck was got a couple of years before COVID. Okay. Um, so we have about 120 people. Their bank signed up. Even if you just need a volunteer for an event, you can request them, and it gets sent out to that entire group who can volunteer. 
Oh, so that means you might send one or two or even groups, larger groups, to help out at community events. Yeah, we partner with a lot of different groups uh, throughout all of our markets. Uh, Defiance obviously is my focus, and we have requests. I, I think we had four or five different volunteer requests this week that we've been able to fill for people. Right. That's wonderful. I know recently also your team helped out with the City of Defiance Bicentennial activities that were held on April 28th. Yeah, you know, it's a great opportunity with all the great events that we have in the community, particularly this year with some extras. If, you were gonna, if we were going to go to it anyways, we might as well be there to help and, and give some support for the groups that don't have quite the volunteers that we need. Right. Absolutely. Of course, the burning question on everyone's mind, how many pancakes did you all make this morning? We didn't keep a count on the pancakes, but we went through six large boxes of batter plus, I think, another two or three smaller boxes. Mm -hmm. So. We got our money's worth out of our pancake today. It was delicious, I am sure. Thank you so much, Sean, for all that you do for our community and State Bank. And we'll be back with you in just a minute. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah with DCTV, and we're here with Julie Halk. She's one of the favorite elementary teachers here in our community. She definitely has a heart for children, and she's here today on behalf of the Children's Business Fair. How are you today, Julie? Really good. It's been so neat to see the whole community come out today. Yes. Now, you all were here last year at the Lilac Festival. Tell us a little bit about um, the mission of this organization. Yeah, we started last year through Yelp, Youth Engage Leadership and Philanthropy. And um, last year they set up their own individual business tents and tables. And this year we really wanted to provide a, a awning and a, ability for any student that wanted to be a part of it. So we got the table, the chairs, and the tent rented. Oh. So we had some sponsors too in the community to help with this. Very nice. How many students are involved in the uh, Children's Business Fair? We had 14 students that were participants and then eight businesses set up. Okay. And what were some of the um, types of businesses that our young people have been working on? Yeah, it's been amazing to see their creativity. So we have some that make their own scrunchies. We have a local honey business. They had honey and they sold out right away of some of their large things of honey. Um, we also had a group from Bowling Green that joined us, and they were makers, and they had 3D products and all kinds of things that they had made. We have um, a book author back there. She um, d wrote her own book and published it. And then art, trash, and so he took trash and turned it into art. Okay. And he designed a lot of really unique recyclables and wanted to um, sell them. Mm -hmm. And then we also had some food items, sweets. And then also Sugar Rush, which was cookies and candy. So many different things out here today. What do you think these children learn about running a business through this program? They have really, even just in hearing them talk today, you can see how they learned the process of running a business. Um, one person, even just walking by, said, oh, you should have sold these for a different price. And um, Annabelle here said, no, they cost me this much, and I was able to sell them for this. Like She literally knew her money, and she knew exactly what um, it would look like if she sold it in a certain way. And so they thought through all those processes before they set up. And I think each year, there's some that came out last year as well, and we have some new business uh, children on, entrepreneurs. And so it's neat to see the camaraderie between them. When one had to leave, they said, oh, I'll help run your station. And just really seeing them come together as a team has been encouraging, too. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now, if any of our viewers are interested in either their own children or grandchildren getting involved in something like this, how do they get involved? Yeah, we'll, we're planning on being here again next year, and we're hoping to have to do maybe two tents. Uh, we have, through the Development Bureau of Defiance, they always have it advertised as well. We have an online site where they can sign up, and um, they will be accepted once they log in, and they have to fill out a short questionnaire. And so we're hoping to have more next year, and we're hoping to grow this. We did have um, Defiance County Economic Development join on this year, and then Defiance Area Foundation was a part of it this year and last year. Okay, so we can see their sponsoring organizations are across the bottom of their banner, and we certainly appreciate that they believe in and support the youth of our community. Um, but you mentioned a website where they can get information and log on. Do you recall what that is? Yeah, um, Children's Business Bureau. I don't have the exact address, but okay. it's on the banner from Defiance uh, Bureau of Visitor Bureau. Okay, Julie, thank you so much, and we wish all the best to these young people that are so hardworking and all of their businesses. Yeah, at the end of the day, too, we have a People's Choice Award, and so everyone that came through was able to vote, 
and there will be four, we had judges too, Lisa um, Breacher from the Northwest State Community College is giving out an entrepreneurship scholarship too that goes along with this today. So there's awards for these children too that are part of this. So really Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, well thank you so much for your support and belief in today's young people and all that you do. We wish you much success and much success to all of these young people as well. Stay tuned.